Welcome back to New Record Day. My name is Ron, and today's review, we're gonna be taking the Klipsch RP600M for a spin. If you are into hi-fi, anything two-channel audio, you have come to the right place. Make sure you subscribe, hit the bell notification, and if you enjoy this review, do me a favor, hit the like button. Let's get started. Now, before we begin, the disclaimer. This is a review. All of my thoughts and opinions about the speaker's performance, they are my own. I'm going to tell you exactly what I think about these guys, and no, I'm not being paid to say anything that I have to say about the Klipsch RP600Ms, and I do not expect to be able to keep these speakers in exchange for anything that I have to say about their performance. All right, so the very first thing that I wanna mention and commend Klipsch for is, I think that the finish on this piano gloss black looks absolutely fantastic. They did a great job, no doubt about that. And I know that the Klipsch RP600M comes in a couple of different finishes that I'll have pulled up on the screen by now. Either way, the sample that was sent to me was this beautiful piano gloss, and I think it looks fantastic. Another thing that I wanna mention that is certainly a highlight about this loudspeaker is, well, look at that. We got magnetic grills. Knowing that the RP600M, depending on the finish, is right around that $500 price point, it's refreshing to see this. I'm a big fan of the bevel that they did on the front. I think it gives it just a nice finished look. No complaints from New Record Day when it comes to how the RP600M looks. It's a very handsome loudspeaker. Spinning this guy around and taking a look on the back, we have a flared port, and this is another thing that we can absolutely celebrate about the design aspects of this loudspeaker. If you haven't seen the teardown video, I go into detail about what this guy looks like on the inside, and I would encourage you to check out that video. But the bottom line is this. This flared port is flared on both sides, and when it comes to port chuffing, port noise, I won't be talking about that in this review because I didn't hear any, and I think that this design was brilliant. I think this was a good move, and Klipsch, we wanna see this kind of stuff, so thumbs up. Now on the back, we do have five-way binding posts, which is fantastic, so you're gonna be able to accept spades, bananas, you name it, bare wire, anything that you can throw at this loudspeaker, you're gonna be able to get it connected, which is great. You also have the ability to do either by wire or by amping with these terminals, so again, that's fantastic. You just simply remove these little jumpers and you're able to buy amp the loudspeaker. No problems there. All right, if we go ahead and remove the speaker grill and get to the business end of the RP600M, we have a two-way loudspeaker, of course. And down below, we have a six and a half inch, what Klipsch calls their copper, hold on a second. I always forget. It is spun copper ceramitallic woofer, six and a half inch. Now here's the deal. In the breakdown video, I asked the question because I was confused as to what is this material? What is this at the end of the day? And my conclusion is this, and I'm gonna stick to it. It's an aluminum cone driver and it looks copper. It's not a copper driver. It's, it's aluminum, anodized, however you wanna call it. It's an aluminum driver. Now up top, we do actually have a one inch titanium dome tweeter. I wasn't really sure if this was an aluminum dome tweeter or if it was a titanium dome tweeter. Turns out, in fact, confirmed, it is titanium. And then the last thing that I wanna mention that is a notable feature about the Klipsch RP600M is the waveguide. There, I said it. And I'm gonna make it clear. You guys ready for the new record day rant of the day? Here it is. This is a waveguide. All of these reviewers that keep saying, the amazing thing about the Klipsch RP600M is that it's a horn speaker that doesn't sound like a horn loudspeaker. Guess what? It's because it's not. <laughs> it's a waveguide. And you must understand that the goal of a waveguide and the goal of a horn are two different things. And the quicker that we educate people on those differences, the better off we're all gonna be. So here it goes. A horn is designed for projection. It wants to make things sound louder. It's all about sensitivity. A waveguide is about controlled directivity. It is saying, I want these frequencies to beam like a flashlight in a specific direction. That is the purpose of a waveguide. It is not the same as a horn. And that, my friends, is why the Klipsch RP600M doesn't sound like a traditional Klipsch horn loudspeaker because it's not. Whoo! Okay, rant over. Simmer down, Ronnie. Simmer down. Before we get to my impressions on how this thing sounds, let's go ahead and check out the gear that we used throughout the evaluation. 
So keeping within the spirit of affordable hi-fi, the two pieces that I use throughout the evaluation process of the Clipshar P600M are two pieces that are under 500 bucks and that seemed to make a whole lot of sense in my opinion. First up, the IOTA VX. This is quickly becoming a favorite here at New Record Day for folks that are on a budget, they just want a great sounding integrated amplifier that shows up to the party and doesn't leave early drunk. <laughs> This is a nice little integrated amplifier. It does a great job, but of the two pieces that I'm about to show you, this was my least favorite of the two in terms of pairing with the RP600M. And I think I know why, and it's certainly not the fault of the IOTA VX. The IOTA VX excels at top end extension. It does a ridiculously good job in that arena. Now combined with the Klipsch RP600M, and we're gonna be talking about that speaker in just a minute, a little bit too much, a little bit too much top end for my taste. IOTA VX, great amplifier, maybe not the perfect amplifier to pair with the Klipsch RP600M in my opinion. Let's go ahead and show you the other amp that I think is actually a better bet. Now this little guy on the other hand is a great pairing in my opinion with the Klipsch RP600M. If you checked out my video, Audio Files on a Budget, you're gonna notice that some of the things that I say about this is probably gonna make a lot of sense when it comes to what I'm about to say with the Klipsch RP600Ms. The top end on this, it certainly does have top end. It's not as detail centric. So not as articulate, not as airy, not as detailed as the IOTA VX. This guy, on the other hand, seems to have a bit more density throughout the mid-band, mid-bass, and bass. And that was complementary to what I was hearing with the Klipsch RP600Ms. So in the end, while both amplifiers would absolutely work, they certainly will do the job. I think that of the two pairings, I would have to hand it to the SVS sound base in this particular situation. The speaker stands that I use throughout the evaluation process, you can pick up over at Monoprice. They're fantastic. I fill them up with kitty litter. And in this particular case, I have the 24 inch stands and that brought the RP600M to a perfect reference level where that tweeter is right at ear level and they worked out great for this particular loudspeaker. Another thing that I wanna mention is there's a lot of different ways that YouTubers and other people reviewing the RP600Ms have mentioned how you can set these loudspeakers up. I'm gonna go a little bit off road here and say that nobody has mentioned what I think you should consider, which is crossing the streams. You should have those speakers to where they're crossing right in front of you. This works fantastic for any loudspeaker that does have a waveguide. And I'll leave a link to a video that I actually did where I talk about this very thing and I show you a practice practical way on how you can do it. Link will be down below as well as the card above me. All right, so starting from the top with treble impressions and the top end extension of the Klipsch RP600M, there are some things that I can celebrate and there are some things that I think that you need to know. Here's the deal. This is a very lively sounding set of speakers. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I get it. You want me to hear the cymbals, but let's relax a little bit for me as I made my way through the recent Strokes album, which I've been listening to a lot, there's cymbals everywhere, and it's just all the time. For the first couple of minutes, I like this, and we've got this lively presentation in the living room, but after a while, the gig is up. I've got snakes hissing pretty much on every single performance, and I find that it is very easy to localize the source of the snakes. You guys know that I'm huge about soundstage and we're gonna talk about that in a minute, but it distracts me when I'm listening to whatever it is and all of a sudden, okay, there's two tweeters. And from those two tweeters, I have hiss. It kind of drives me crazy when I'm listening to All Things Rock, which is being my very first clip speaker that I've ever reviewed, I thought this was like what they were known for. And so I was very hopeful that as I listen to a lot of rock music that what I was gonna get was a true to life sounding symbol. And the reality is not so much. I think it is a enhanced sounding symbol. And we're talking about the decay after the hit. If we were talking about the actual hit of the symbol, we would be talking about a downright bright loudspeaker. And I don't feel that way about the Klipsch RP600Ms. I just think that the extension past that, getting into air and extension, it's a bit over the top. Now, as we start traveling down into the fundamental hits 
of the cymbals, I really have nothing to complain about. I think it sounds fine. I don't know exactly what frequencies we're actually pulling out and talking about when we start talking about those fundamental hits, but I was noticing as I was making my way through a lot of different types of music, again, percussive stuff, the initial attack and the initial hit is totally fine. I never found myself entering listening fatigue due to those actual attacks and those actual hits of the cymbals. Now, ironically enough, when I started gravitating away from rock-centric music, stuff with a lot of cymbals and drum kits, and I started moving into scaled-down simple performances with acoustic guitars and things like that, no complaints, and it sounded fine. So I'm convinced that the higher you go with the RP600M, the more that things go from natural to sounding a bit enhanced. It's almost as if your best friend you know, came into your house and he turned up the greens on your HDTV and pretty soon you're like, this grass is so darn green, but that's not what grass looks like. It's too green. Here in Arizona, <laughs> it's not green at all. My point is this, to me, it just doesn't sound all that natural in my opinion. Now, before we begin, I think that it is really important that you understand what I'm looking for in a two-way loudspeaker is a perfect and seamless transition from the woofer to the tweeter. I wanna know that when the speaker was designed, that that transition, that seamless transition of going from the woofer to the tweeter through the use of a crossover was done well. So that transition is a bridge. And unfortunately, objectively, this has already been seen in so many different measurements that I don't even need to bust out Clio to know this. And guess what? It even shows up in my in-room measurements there is unfortunately a hole in the response with the RP600M. A hole might be generous, let's call it a dip. There is a dip right where that crossover point is. You must understand there will be consequences when we see something like that. And those consequences absolutely are audible. You can hear it. For me, as I listen to a lot of the stuff that is gonna be mid-range centric, it sounds to me like there is a loss in clarity and a loss in presence with the RP600M right smack dab in the middle of the midband. What that also does is it directs attention to everything that is below it and everything that is above it. Whenever you have this hole in the response, and I've heard this time and time again, it is so easy to say, we've got treble, I hear that, and beyond, and we've got bass. But that bridge that connects the two, which is critical to get right, I don't know how else to say it. I think there are some things that you can celebrate that's not dancing in those regions as much. Some male vocals I actually appreciate on the RP600M, and I never noticed that big of a gap, but when we start moving into higher frequencies with some instruments, electric guitars, anything starting to extend right in that thousand hertz range, and there's a lot of instruments that do, I was just missing some clarity, and I was missing some presence, and I wish it was there, so. That is some feedback for Klipsch. Take it for what it's worth. It's my opinion. As we get into bass, here's the thing. There's a lot of good to be had with the bass on the RP600M if we're talking about the extension and bass. The extension and bass is quite surprising, and my in-room measurements show that this speaker is able to get down into the 30s, which is quite impressive. It can dig down deep. Bombs dropping? Yeah, the RP600M, it can throw a punch. They did a good job with being able to get that driver to extend low. On the other hand, I wish that there was texture and tone that went along with that extension. Because for me, as you guys know this, and I think a lot of it has to do with the materials that are being used on the actual woofer. I love paper cone drivers for this very reason. I find that as I listen to a lot of bass, upright bass, where I get some texture and some tone, I don't wanna necessarily hear just the frequency being played out from the loudspeaker. And unfortunately, with the Klipsch RP600M, it's kind of a mixed bag. On some electronic music, some pop music, it works and it works great. And I didn't struggle to say, oh, I wish I had more texture and tone, but acoustic instruments that were well recorded, 
that's where it would show up. And I thought to myself, I'm not hearing the level of clarity and detail retrieval that I am hearing in a lot of different speakers that I've heard. Again, keeping in mind the price point around that same price point. So if you are a sucker for texture and tone and bass, I don't know if this speaker is gonna win you over. If you're looking for a speaker that is able to play low, it can drop some bombs. So a bit of a mixed bag when it comes to bass for me and the RP600M. Soundstage on the RP600M is pretty darn good. Other than the fact that, as I mentioned, I'm gonna bring it up again with that top end and being able to localize where the tweeters are at. If you cross the streams and you actually have the speakers crossed right in front of your face, you can get a decent soundstage out of the RP600Ms. It's a believable soundstage. And for me, the center image was locked solid throughout all of my listening tests. And I had no problems with that. And the stage was actually quite wide. So there are things to celebrate here, but I also think that you should know that depending on the type of music that you're listening to, anything with a lot of cymbal hits, I have a feeling that you're gonna know exactly where the speakers are each and every time without any problem at all, and that's gonna bum you out if soundstage is something that is of great importance when it comes to listening to music. All right, folks, and there we have it. That is my official review of the Klipsch RP600M. There are some things that we can absolutely celebrate and there are some things that I think that you need to know dependent on what your goals are in buying loudspeakers and what kind of a sound that you're trying to get out of a pair of loudspeakers. I hope that what I had to say is helpful. And if you like this review, make sure you hit the thumbs up. We are on all the different social media platforms. You can follow us down below. We would love to have you join the Patreon party if that is something that you're interested in doing and subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next video.